here. <clears throat> Let me just get that. And 237. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. Okay. Three, two. Ready? Hold on. Three. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 237 of the Security Podcast here on 30. And just like everything else, we are talking about the virus, the virus, the virus, the novel coronavirus, COVID-19. I don't know what where 18 and 17 and 16 and 15 were, but we're at 19. No, no, we're not. We're not talking about that. We you've heard enough of it. We just figured that that's literally the only thing that people are talking about and we do have a topic so we're going to move away let's first say hi to tom hey everyone make sure your uh, your antivirus is up to date it's very the, important the, the in-app purchase for covid19 protection starts at i don't know something anyway tom is in uh the state where all the covids are really bad and my state here in new jersey actually the towns around me each have a case, but my town is not has no cases. So you're you're the last survivor in a zombie apocalypse, yeah. and you're just you're watching them encroach on your stronghold <laughs> and just holding out for dear life. I mean, you can't get you can't be positive if you never test. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I also subscribe to head in the sandisms. So I mean that that's literally the problem. And my town is uh, very filled with a lot of uh, Google scientists. So I want to know if there's a vaccine, whether they would need 30 years of studies and uh, 100,000 clinical trials before they test it out. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm a school teacher for everyone who doesn't know. And you can annoy, get mad at me, tell me I'm wrong. But just for the last word on this, the schools need to stay open unless there's a good reason to shut them down. And it's not. So if you're you don't want to send your kid to school, that's OK. But don't make me don't force everyone to stay home because because you have some privilege that your parents that you can work from home or whatever it is. It's a real problem for a lot of people. So don't at me. I don't want to hear it. That's my two cents. But anyway, this week's topic, this week's topic. And just to be honest, there's literally no news. I mean, no, all the all the hacker, all the hackers, the black hats, everybody are literally at home working from home or whatever they're doing. There is no news. There's no like super supreme vulnerability. So we were so it, for the last few weeks, all this has been is doing that. So our topic today is going to be, OK, now you're at home. Literally, what can we what can you do to pass the time? And the answer is, why not Linux? So Tom's going to tell me, why not Linux? Yeah, if if you wanted to level up your tech ability, if you want to play around with new stuff, if you just want to mess around with a computer that you can blow up six ways to Sunday without really impacting yourself too much trying out linux in a virtual machine is a fantastic option and thanks to uh the fantastic feature that is virtual machine snapshots if you want to take a snapshot and then blow up the whole system or do something horrifying you can totally do that and then what i have to do to get back to normal just recover that snapshot you're done so I like this idea a lot because here you have your home, your spouse is maybe home. Maybe you're learning that you can't get along with your spouse 24 hours a day. Maybe your kids are home and they're bored. The problem with what they call social distancing is that you can't go out. You're stuck at home. So you got to do something. So why not take an old computer and uh, put Linux on it? Re-network re your entire house change all this is the time to actually accomplish something that you may have not accomplished because now you're stuck at home for however i don't know how long are we going to be stuck at home for so yeah i know i'm stuck at home for at least the month of march uh possibly longer it depends on how everything shakes out you're in a position where working from home is not really a big deal yeah, honestly, working from home for me is usually more productive than being in the office. Uh, there's less distractions and uh, less people around for me to just chat up all day. So for me, I teach kids and I'm lucky that high school has laptops that we can give out. But as I remind people, how do you teach a first grader to online learn 
is a real struggle that we have to deal with. So right now we are currently closed under snow day procedures Thursday and Friday. So we will they will reevaluate on Sunday, but I'm I'm starting to get nervous in the sense that all the externalities, I mean, just think we get all the time off and the payroll tax cut cuz that's going to help everybody. Which for me is good. They, I delay paying my taxes. That is excellent for me. <laughs> That's really going to help me. A payroll tax. Oh, I mean, a payroll tax will help everybody. And technically, I do own my own side business, so that that will help. But anyway, so you have these. I don't know how many computers you have lying around, but look, we don't want to say use your main machine. I, I would not say recommend using no, your main no. machine. <laughs> don't don't wipe out your, your main machine and put Linux on it and try to try to figure it out. That is that is absolutely not the purpose of this exercise. The purpose is to learn about Linux in a safe and controlled environment. So if you've got a, a spare PC or if you have one of the seven Raspberry Pis laying around your house doing nothing like I do, that's also a fantastic option. So I had, so I want to clarify, I had seven Raspberry Pis. I transformed six of them into weather stations that tweet the temperature at random rooms in the school. And That's then fantastic. Put them, and then put them illegally on the network. So I only have six <laughs> Raspberry Pis, and now they're all underpowered at school and are now frozen because I did not set up static IP because I don't know the IP ranges. So, but nice. again... So anyway, yeah, so if you have a bunch of Raspberry Pis lying around or you have an old computer, even that Chromebook to install Crouton on, I think on literally any Chromebook, you can do that and play with Linux. Um, we've spoken about which Linux distribution we recommend and everything else, but for the most part, I don't think it matters. Pick something you've never played with, throw it on there, try to get it working, do something. And, and let's say let's say you don't have a spare computer. Let's say you've you've got your one box and uh, who knows, right? Like you're you're using it. There's no reason to blow it up. Please don't. But there's a, a piece of free software called VirtualBox. Um, Oracle acquired it way back in the day, but it's still being maintained. It's actually got some pretty nice features to it. Uh, you know, would I recommend running an entire business on VirtualBox? No, of course not. Uh, there are better products out there for doing that, but. Just for, you know, throwing in a Linux distribution, playing around with different machines, uh, VirtualBox works great. Uh, what it does, if you don't know what a virtual machine is, it quite literally creates a tiny computer inside your computer. Um, and there's a lot of really cool technology to, you know, on how that works, but we're not going to dive into that today. Uh, but basically what it means is that this little computer inside of your computer, you can mess around, you can install different operating systems, you can wipe that tiny little virtual hard drive and it doesn't affect anything on the outside. If you want to get rid of the machine, if you want to get rid of the software, just remove that virtual box file uh, and uninstall the program and you're done. Um, so it's really nice to be able to spin up, play with stuff and then tear stuff back down again. Uh, I use it a lot for just experimenting with different Linux distributions, different software sets, and uh, even how to network certain things together because you can create a virtual network and tie a bunch of machines together, which is really neat too. I feel like doing a virtual network inside a virtual machine will only lead to problems. I, it's, it's a lot of fun. As long as you keep it all within inside VirtualBox, it doesn't affect anything on the outside. Like you don't have to change your router config for this. You literally just say, I want this to be on this IP range. And I also want this thing to be on the same network. And they can talk to each other. It's basically magic. So I have a sort of quasi illegal question here. Um, so if I have a couple of computers, let's say that are really old with XP stickers on them, can I, uh, install virtual box, put XP, use that XP license key, and then immediately upgrade to 10. Um, it is certainly possible. Now it depends on if that, if Microsoft accepts that, if they do, mm -hmm. then yeah, I don't, I honestly don't see why not, but Good luck finding a, an actual legitimate, not malwared up version of, uh, of Windows XP that you can just download. No, uh, you, I have, I have. have a, oh, if you've got a physical CD, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, VirtualBox even gives you the option where you can put in a CD and you can say, hey, just use the real CD tray. And it'll just read the data right in from the CD tray. It's really cool. 
The other thing you can do is if you don't want to install Linux, if you had Windows 7 on your computer and you haven't upgraded, now would be the really good, perfect time to back up your computer, set everything up and actually upgrade. Yeah. There's lots of projects that you can do. I mean, we've talked about changing your backup method. You're, uh, I mean, there's, yeah, changing your backup methods, trying something else out. Uh, migrating software over, upgrading Windows 7 to 10, that would, again, I got to do that for my dad. Changing it's, your old passwords that you threw in your password yeah. manager and you swore you were going to rotate all those passwords <laughs> one day. Now that you're on a password manager, there's there's just no time, right? You're always just so busy with other things, but now you're under full lockdown for the next couple weeks. And what else are you going to do, right? You've already watched The Office 14,000 times, so you're going to watch that again or change your passwords. Or maybe do both. Or do them at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so, like you said, we're trying to think, come up with some jobs there. If you have kids, I really think the Raspberry Pi, and uh, either using that or installing Linux on them and showing them that Linux is not a dirty word. Linux will be, it's it's already here. You just have to, you just have to think outside the box. And while Windows may, may be your main machine, why not Linux? Why not have your kids learn something new and now they'll learn two new things. They'll have Windows 10 for school or whatever it is. And then they'll have Linux or Chromebook or whatever it is. Learning something new always helps. Uh, I do like the password changing. Um, we should, it's, we, we've spoken about LastPass and how we want to kind of move off of LastPass, not for any major reason, but we told you that the VC firm bought it. And so with the VC firm buying it, we don't know what's going to happen to it. So we were looking for alternative password managers. And I think our answer is Bitwarden. I think that's what we came up with yep. as the free open source version that has a paid uh, donate wear thing that I, I would absolutely do. Let's see. The other thing I would do is if you want, learn to re-network things. Like a lot of things, oh, I'm going to put all those IoT things on one network. And you haven't done that yet. And now you have 30 IoT Philips Hue light bulbs that have some sort of severe vulnerability that has been fixed. Now is the time to do it. Uh, like learning PF Sense or whatever it is. I'm... If, if you wanted to, uh, there are plenty of free learning resources out there to learn everything from, you know, trying out different styles of cooking or how to build things or getting started with woodworking or uh, one of my favorite pastimes, learn how to program, learn how to code. Uh, code Academy is fantastic. I've recommended that to a lot of people. Is it, you know, the all time penultimate, nothing is going to be better than this? No, nah, it's, it's got pros and cons like, like everything else. There are parts of Code Academy that I'm just not a fan of. Uh, but for the most part, it's solid, uh, and the free tiers will actually get you some some decent mileage. Uh, you can pay for it if you want some more advanced courses, but uh, to get started, it's totally free. So if you want to learn to hack on Python or Ruby or JavaScript or uh, really a ton of different languages, Code Academy has got a pretty gnarly free tier. So, you know, try it out. Give it a shot. My my whole problem is is what's it called? I'm not creative enough to come up with a good project. So after I type hello world and I make something blink a few times, my issue is, okay, what am I going to do? And then, oh, we can make a media server with the Raspberry Pi. And I think to myself, I already have that. Like I, it, so for me, the hardest part is finding something that's really awesome to do. But yes, the tutorials on Code Academy, uh, code.org for the kids is also, is like you said, really helpful. Uh, Obviously, reading reading some new technical books, learning some privacy. You know what? We could break some encryption. I mean, you could always break encryption. Learning crypto is always great. And if you need something to really like mentally drain you. So the only thing you can do at the end of the day is watch The Office for the 14,000th time. Uh, getting started with cryptography uh, is a fantastic pastime. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you won't be born. Or maybe you will be born. Who knows? Crypto is not for everyone. So if we had to recommend the Linux distribution for the very first time. Very have... first time? Easy. Super easy question. Uh, Ubuntu is big. It is popular for a reason. Uh, you know, is it the thing that most enterprises use? No, of course not. Most enterprises stick with Red Hat or CentOS or other enterprise distributions like that. Um, for some reason, the enterprise world kind of just hyper-focused on RPMs and Red Hat. 
uh, which kills me as a Debian guy. Uh, but Ubuntu is fantastic. It By default, when you install Ubuntu Desktop, it comes with a desktop. It comes with Firefox. It comes with a bunch of programs that you would want, like, you know, uh, tiny image editors and, uh, you know, little games to play with like Solitaire and Minesweeper and everything you would want out of a desktop operating system, Ubuntu comes with. Uh, so if you want to throw it up in VirtualBox and, you know, take it for a spin, do that. If you've used Ubuntu before, if you kind of know your way around Linux, but you want to you wanna hit it hard, you want to get down into the belly of the beast and you know, don't give me a desktop environment, that's, that's for kids. Give me something I have to put together myself where I take all the binaries and I link them together with the config files and I make my perfect Linux system. Uh, you could do the insane thing and do Linux from scratch. Totally valid. But if you wanted kind of that in-between where you're not really ready to compile, but you still want a self-built project, uh, Arch Linux is amazing. Uh, I learned more in six months with Arch Linux than I did on six years of Ubuntu. And that is not a joke or an exaggeration. Uh, I literally leveled myself up infinitely more in those six months with Arch Linux. Um, what it basically is, is they give you a super minimal system and you have to install it piece by piece, uh, even as far as choosing which bootloader you want to use. Now, if this sounds like a horrible slog, it is at some parts. But luckily, uh, and not luckily, it took a whole lot of hard work, uh, the community maintains the Arch Linux Wiki. Uh, this is a collection of some of the best technical articles written about Linux software and how to build a distribution that I have ever seen. Uh, I even use the Arch Linux wiki to troubleshoot things on my Ubuntu system and figure out how the pieces actually connect and how things are actually working. It is uh, quite literally the best Linux resource I have ever seen. Uh, so check out Arch Linux. Again, you can throw it in VirtualBox just like Ubuntu, uh, and you can go through those install steps. You can make your perfect Linux system. And at the end of the day, when something breaks on something, even if it's Ubuntu, you know where to look. I've taken my learnings on Arch Linux and applied it to real world at work problems that I've seen. Uh, it's super fantastic. It is a great learning resource. I mean, I guess it's important, but I, I don't see why do I want to recompile everything from scratch by myself? You don't. And Arch Linux, do, I mean, you can recompile on Arch Linux, but by default, the things you're downloading are binaries. They're already pre-compiled. What you're doing is you're saying, okay, I want this bootloader and I want on the boot level that I that I default into, I want to run this desktop manager, but this window manager, but I also want this style of GUI on top of things. Uh, and maybe maybe I don't want the default desktop manager. Maybe, maybe I just want a window manager and I want some tiling. And so you hook up i3, uh, you hook up some like minor XFCE things because it gives you a nice uh, couple built-ins. Uh, and then you put that all on top of light DM and you call it a day. Uh, so you can actually figure out what you want and experiment with all kinds of different ways of running a desktop system. Uh, there are some people that build Linux systems that are utterly horrifying to look at. You, you look and you say, how could you use any of this? But when they try to do something, their workflow is so perfectly tuned to the way they work, they couldn't be faster if you put them on anything else. Uh, so yeah, if, if you're into you know just minimizing downtime and improving workflow and, and trying to get that perfect operating system that works just the way you want it to, Arch Linux can do that for you. I think we should all just learn command line. Just do straight if up you're command using Arch line. Linux, if you're using Arch saying, Linux, that's the majority of the install. I mean, I'm saying just boot right into command line and learn your command line operations. That's another good project. Start learning your Linux command lines. Um, the other thing you can do, and my, uh, I, I, I hate to say this, but the female students, they have a female only contest. Girls Go Cyber Start is a capture the flag contest. So there's a bunch of capture the flag contests that will help you that you can do that will clearly waste time. It will teach you something and you, Hey, you may be good at them that you can maybe uh, position something else learning, uh, playing with some of the, some of the capture the flag contests that have been out there. You don't have to start. You can start from scratch. You can do something. My favorite is Pico CTF because it's made for like high school kids, but even DEF CON has their qualifying contests that you can work on and pound on and, and everything else. 
Speaking of DEF CON, uh, if you wanted to, if like you don't know where to get started on security stuff, but you're pretty interested, right? You're you're a fan of the show. You're you want to learn, obviously. Um, YouTube has got a ton of of security conference videos just uploaded and available for free for totally for free. There are weeks upon weeks upon weeks upon weeks of free video content uh, on just about every hacking subject you can imagine. Uh, do you want to learn about hacking cars? Cool. There's a DEF CON talk on that. Do you want to learn about, you know, how to crack you know, and to on patches? It. There, I yeah. mean, there's a DEF CON village. I mean, they, uh, they, they have that. Look, DEF CON is one of the things we are organizing for this year. And so far, it is not canceled. And that scares me a little bit. Yeah, that's a whole lot of people in a very small space. And and so and that and we don't know literally what to do, and we're getting no guidance because I don't think they have guidance because they're all under quarantine in Washington with you. And, yeah. And so we that that's another problem. But the DefCon DefCon and uh, has made has made it put all their videos as much as they can online for you to watch and you can go from there. I am not a pound on the keyboard type of person. I like compliance and uh, what's it called? Policy videos. So again, the crypto and privacy village is where I am and you have things on literally anything and you can see cool hacks. You can see different things. My favorite is how to break telegrams encryption. Anytime I hear a talk on that, I automatically approve it because the yep. more people that know about it, the better, the better we'll get pe more people off of Telegram. So if, just... uh, if you want to learn about, uh, you know, software defined radios and how just to, to sniff the air and figure out exactly what's being transmitted and why. Uh, there are talks on that too, on how to get started with software defined radios and how to make sense of the noise that you can't even see. Um, it's super, super cool stuff. And that's actually one area that I know very little about, but the little I know, it's so enticing, but I know it's a rabbit hole. As soon as I learn a little bit about software defined radio, I'm, I'm just gone. I'm gone for months, just diving deep into this stuff. Uh, so I've stayed away for now, just for now. I mean, for me, I am not a YouTube fan. I know you are, my kids are. I don't understand how people just watch YouTube all day, but I may have to start, just sit there and just let things play and go from there. I guess the whole point of the show is find something that you would not normally do because, again, you can't go outside. You can't, or I mean, I guess you can go outside, but you can't go different places. And you have this time to learn a new skill or a new hobby or a certification or whatever it is. And you should obviously uh, take advantage of it. It's uh, it's you have it here, especially with your kids. Find like I keep on saying, get a Raspberry Pi and put Retro Pi on there and play video games all day. That's always a good thing. Uh, yeah. Make a VPN so when you're out and about, you are a little cleaner. Run Pi Hole or a little safer. Run uh, learn to put Pi Hole on, which I'm not that enthused about saying, but I know people like it if you're careful. Just read the documentation and everything else. So, so yeah. And what's what's nice about Piehole is that if you don't like it, it's as easy as you know changing the DNS back in your router and unplugging the thing. Like you don't have to go through a whole lot of effort to to back out of Piehole. Uh, so if you wanted to try it, and if it doesn't work for you, there's really not too much risk. You might annoy somebody for a little bit. My problem with Piehole is that. I'm not the only one in my house. And if somebody has a problem, it's those weird problems. Like how come this isn't loading? And we've talked about these over the years. Yeah. What, you, it's really hard. Oh crap. I have this other system that I have to log into, to log into, to log into. And, and we have little problems like that. So. Yeah. Which is the other great thing about a virtual machine, because if you wanted to play with this tech and, you know, try to see, Hey, is this going to work for me without, you know, making big changes, then you can do that. I've actually experimented with various PFSense setups by literally installing a PFSense on a virtual machine and then using that as the front of a network, a virtual network, and then putting a bunch of stuff behind it and seeing how it all routes and works out. Uh, so if you want to learn networking or, uh, you know, build a little, a little cluster of machines, you can do that too. I, like I said, I think with my time off, I'm actually going to, I have to write a, that's why I left at work, a uh, computer security course. That's what I should be doing. 
I should be getting that computer security thing and writing lesson plans for that. Uh, the other one was, I would say, I don't know if I would recommend learning how to cook only because if you need ingredients, they may be a little hard to come by and you have to leave That's your house. True. That's However, true. when you do have a few weeks, learning how to cook is a really awesome thing to do. Uh, you could also learn like cook hacking, right? It's like, okay, I've got 20 packets of ramen noodles, a can of baked beans and some half and half. What on earth can I do with this? And try to hack your way out of that miserable situation, right? You're probably not going to come up with anything good, but at the very least, it would be interesting. And you could have an iron chef with your uh, significant other in the house who can make the yes. best out of this. <laughs> you, you just have to get the tray and lift it up and be like, ramen noodles, because yeah. that's the only secret ingredient you have. <laughs> Or what's that that show that I don't watch anymore where they sabotage you? You only get one yes. ramen noodle to do to do that. <laughs> just just a little. Death. So anyway, look, I I know we we still have a lot of time left, but like we said, find a hobby. We spoke about installing Linux on the computers. That's I, I think that's a really good idea. Do some security maintenance backing back up to something go through your backups try to find uh things that you don't need maybe maybe clean out some old backups or things you're gonna digital clean up we've talked about hoarding in the past with that um if you have kids maybe try to find some sort of really uh, some project that that they'll find either with a retro pie or some other raspberry pi thing do your iot things if you have a bunch of those or remove your iot things that's another thing you can do if you want uh just try to do something to keep busy for the next two weeks or however long you're going to be working from home. And uh, hopefully all this goes away and you're at least a little more secure when you're done. I guess that's the goal. Yep. So, And if you wanted questions on projects, programming, virtual machines, Linux, security, whatever, join the WhatsApp group. We'd be happy to talk about the stuff. Trust me, yeah. being cooped up, I'm, I'm kind of kind of needing some social interaction so uh if you could throw questions into the chat room you would uh you would absolutely make my day yeah so find us on uh on somewhere wherever we have the whatsapp group there and uh and go from there make a pgp key that takes that takes a few hours (laughs) depending on on what your uh what your bit strength is and uh algorithms yes Yes, that will take a few hours. Learn to uh, put it on, put it on the key server. Send us encrypted mail. Realize how powerful you are, and then realize it's so tedious. And yeah, uh, you should yep. just download Signal and just send message advice. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, with that said, we're we're gonna cut it a little short. But anyway, we'll uh, hopefully there'll be some news that's not like the world is ending next week. But like we said, it's it's literally nothing. It's been bone dry with with things that affect people. So maybe we'll find another topic like this, but hopefully we'll see you next week. Yep. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you, everyone. Save. Okay. I've stopped that. Let me kill off Twitch.